All right. Hey, GR here for another 3 C, 3 CSD, uh, five minutes uh, on the theory and analysis of play. So parity of analogy, where does it come from? Why is it important? Uh, or parity of analogy, dreams in play. The reason parity of analogy is so important to engage, not only immerse us in a game, but really in any activity that involves play, is that the, the origin of games, the origin of play, is essentially the function of dreams. And the reason for that is because dreams are the function of our cognitive ability to work out situations and circumstances in our reality that we don't always have the ability to do linearly. And, you know, this is a primary function of mammals, and without going into the more complex metaphysical ramifications of both consciousness and dreaming, you've no doubt seen, like, a dog dream of chasing something or being chased. And you've no doubt had your own experience of something much akin to this in your own dreams, be it more complex or even not so directly related to uh, finding or becoming resources for some other creature. But this is basically where play comes from. Uh, and it's also why when we're in a real state of play, we're in a state of flow and timelessness is the experience because we're really experiencing the thing within the function of dreams. This is also why film is really powerful because when you watch something, the part of your brain that turns those still images and the sound into meaning is the part of your brain that also creates dreams. And the same is really true of play. So even though it may be highly abstracted, like in chess, when we're playing in a game and we really lose ourselves in it, we have gone beyond the bounds of our restrictive parameters of like ego and linear operational consciousness. Now, if that isn't pertinent or doesn't seem pertinent, hear me out. The difference between having a casual game that kind of is relieving and one that is fundamentally transformative in the same way that sometimes you come out of a movie theater, when we had movie theaters and movies, and you felt, oh, that was cool. And then sometimes you'd come out of a movie theater and it would take a while for like the rest of your psyche to get out of the cave because you've been fundamentally changed as a human being, or at least that's what it felt like. That's what we're talking about. And really, even in like a beer and pretzels type D&D game, you get that freedom of consciousness. That's really what we're talking about when we're talking about how when you play, particularly a role-playing game, you're freed from the bondage of self. You're no longer in the prison of your own ego and persona for a given period of time. And the more you understand how parity of analogy works and why it's important and also how it relates to, and not even in an academic format, but just how dreaming and being free of the created um, you know, front of persona that we use all the time in play not only empowers us in the long run, which is, again, not going into the metaphysical and simply the neuromechanical, what dreams are about. They give us the ability to non-linearly approach concerns and problems and ideas and just questions that we have in ways that we can't with the use of our conscious uh, frontal lobe. And, you know, that's really, it's a really powerful tool to have, not only as someone who plays games, but also someone who makes games, but also just someone who likes to enjoy themselves. And if you can go from, the, here's, the, here's the, the cherry that's being offered here with the understanding of this concept. Um, you can go from having like an okay store-bought cake to an amazing homemade cake to the ability to take a store-bought cake and have it be amazing simply with a couple of these ingredients and understanding the power of the parody of analogy and also the power of dreams it, that really helps. And, you know, uh, this has been GR for 3CSD um, on player base. And I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, and 
Thanks for listening. Ciao. Gotcha.